What is going on, everybody? It's your boy, SJ the Sauce Guy, and today we are discussing the Scuf Envision Pro controller and going through some of my settings that I use through the IQ app for my Call of Duty gaming. So if you don't know, I'm a stream, I stream on Twitch, and this has been my main controller now for, I believe, just over three months since I purchased it in, I believe it was November. And so I've been enjoying my time using it. There's some things that have required some fine tuning and the IQ app is, is great for doing that fine tuning of the software and the controller itself is sensational for, for the hardware. This is my controller. I play with it plugged in so that there's no latency. I do play with the control freak uh, grip on top as well. And this is the current setup of my controller that we're about to go through. So let's get into it. All right, so looking at the very first screen here, this is what the IQ app looks like. So I have my controller up here. I have the profile saved as SJ main, and I just wanted to quickly go through some of my mappings that I have for the controller. So I have the typical button layout here. That's, these are preset. No need to change any of these. I have the left bumper. So the left bumper here set to down on the D-pad. And this is so I can drop money potentially quickly so I can access my inventory for my bag. That's just the most useful button for me for this controller. And then on the right, I have the up arrow, which is this up arrow on the D-pad. For Call of Duty, that is the pinging button. So that means when I'm pulling the trigger and I'm shooting at somebody, I'm also live pinging them at the same time. I recently, recently watched um, Iceman Isaac's video where he discusses that he's got the pinging on the left side. So when he's aiming down the side, he's also pinging. I think that's also a good idea. So I might swap these two, but we'll see. I've been playing with this as the ping button since I got the controller and I've been enjoying it ever since. The first button here, the G1 button here, I have set to Discord Deafen. And so that's when I'm in the Ghoulie and the Gulag, for those of you who don't know, and I want to mute my teammates and, and mute my, myself so that I can pay attention to that for just one moment. So immediately, I don't have to talk to my teammates or anything. I just hit this button and then I'm deafened in Discord. And then I press it one more time and it's undeafened. So if you want to see a little bit of what the key binds look like here for the G button itself, I have it set as a keystroke and it's set to the G1 button and it, then it's set to control shift D, which is what the key bind is in my discord. So that is how that is set. The next one here is I skipped this one because I don't really use a whole bunch of these to be honest. In fact, this is my most used G button right here. It is so convenient, but I don't really use a whole bunch of these other ones, but I do have them mapped in any case. The next one is push to talk. And so push to talk is just to allow me to talk in chat to my teammates or just in, in general in proximity chat. So that is just pressing the space bar. So you press and hold this on the space bar and then a push to talk. So it registers the input um, as you're pressing it. But I also do have a foot pedal for this. So this one's kind of a moot point, but that's just how I have it set up. Uh, the next one is to turn on eco mode. I don't really ever press that. Um, this one is to pause or play media, whatever media is playing on my computer. Uh, the next layout is hardware mappings. None of this really changes. I think, oh, actually, let me go back here. I didn't discuss my back paddle. So the back right paddle I have set to A, which is jumping for me, and B, which is actually melee. So I play on tactical for Call of Duty. So I switch my right stick and the B button. Um, that's the tactical. So this is actually my melee. So this is jump. This is melee and then i think i'm blocking it right here on this screen but the inner button right here it's it's kind of behind my image here is y which is to apply plates in call of duty and also swap weapons swap your, your weapon to your secondary and then the next one is x which is your activity button so that's to open a door for example open a box interact whatever it may be so those are the settings that I use for my usual gameplay on the back buttons to allow me to leave my thumbs on the controller for as long as possible. Hardware mappings, these ones don't really change. L, this is, I guess it's set to, they're, they're labeled as RB and LB. I haven't done anything to this screen at all. Lighting effect, I have it just set to rainbow. I don't really care about this. I mean, it's neat, but 
Uh, I'm not looking. I barely ever look at my controller. It's always in my hands. The triggers. Now, this one is something that I have taken quite some time to fine tune because you have to kind of fine tune it in with the game as well. And I have had some issues with this one where I haven't been able to find the sweet spot for me. And I think that this is it for me for for Call of Duty specifically. I can't speak to all the games, but for Call of Duty specifically, if you see here, there is like this micro jitter right here. And because this has hair triggers on the controller, I'm just mouse clicking this and it's not moving quite a large distance, but it's an activation of the input. 4% dead zone, I think is the sweet spot because anything less than that, the gun starts to, or the, the gun starts aiming down sight or starts shooting a random bullet here or there. And I think that 4% for me is a good sweet spot. I saw in Iceman Isaac's video, he had 7% as his sweet spot. This will be something that you kind of fine tune. And I've, I think that this is the good spot for me. And I have it set to linear. I think, I think some have been set to default or, or some have been set to, uh, you know, some of the other patterns that are set here. But I think that linear is what's working best for me. And so I've, I've been sticking with it ever since I set it. The next one we want to move to here are the thumbsticks. So again, I have this set to linear for both of them and I have them set to 2%. You can increase this if you want, but I have these as low as I possibly can so that I don't have crazy stick drift, but also I have the quickest input for the thumbsticks. I think that the 2% is a sweet spot. I will occasionally have that stick drift that you typically see on controllers, but it's manageable. It's nothing too crazy. So I've been I've been pretty good with this and I felt like I've had great aim with this 2% set. I have the vibrations turned entirely off. You don't ever really want to have those on when you're playing a shooter game. And then the next one is your device settings. So you can have three different slots here in your memory for your controller. I have mine set to slot one. I don't really have anything set in slot two or three. This will be useful if you have, you know, sibling or another family member or friend that you live with that uses a controller. So that's a great feature. There's also an eco mode. It'll turn on and then I usually turn it off as soon as I start stream or whenever I begin playing. And then none of the rest of this is ever really touched here. And I should say that this is that button that changes the mode for which uh, profile you play on. If I press that middle button right now, you'll see I just switched up here to profile two, profile three, default and then back to SJ main. That's a little bit of information. Those are basically my settings for this controller. Again, this is for mostly Call of Duty gameplay, which is what I play. And so I hope that this has been helpful for those of you guys who play Call of Duty and have the Envision Pro controller. Again, Iceman Isaac's video, very, very helpful for multiple settings, but he has a segment on the controller in Vision Pro and how he has his mapped. It's a little bit more uh, intricate the way he's done it, but I think this is a simple way to do it and I've been enjoying doing it this way. So I'll drop that video link in the description below and uh, let you guys watch it for yourself and, and see if that's helpful for you too. Editor SJ here. I was uh, about to wrap up the video here and I realized that I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the negatives of this controller real quickly and the IQ app specifically. And the major point that I've been having some difficulty with this controller is if I do not have the IQ app open on my PC and I am gaming, then there will be some inputs that do not register. And I know I mentioned that in the last video, but I didn't put a big emphasis on it. The IQ app almost always just needs to be open on your controller if you are gaming, because there will be an instance or two where an input won't register and it'll be the left trigger or the right trigger, two very important triggers for Call of Duty where you can't aim down sight and you can't shoot your gun. So very, very important. And I won't say that IQ app is without flaws. I, the IQ, IQ app does have errors and things will happen with it, but they usually get rectified and I've never had to use a different controller while I'm gaming when I'm using this. I can fix the problem while I'm also gaming and streaming. So if that's any indication of the ability of this controller, uh, it is resilient, it's able to go through some things. There are some issues with software. I won't say that there's not. Also, you can't overclock this. So if you're used to overclocking on a controller, you know, uh, you won't be able to do that, but it is still a great controller. I've appreciated using it. And this IQ app 
it isn't the best it isn't the best out there but it is still good i hope you guys enjoyed this video i look forward to seeing the comments and and questions that you may have in the comments below i'll be making sure i respond to everything and i'll see you in the next one